We're back on In Your Corner. I'm Walt Kane. The number one New Year's resolution every year is to get into better shape. And there are lots of products out there that claim they can help you do that. Here to help us sort through what works and what doesn't and what, in fact, might just be an outright scam is Mike Guarneri from Custom Training and Union. Mike, welcome to In Your Corner. Good Thank to have you. Thank you very much, Walt. It is really one of the more common New Year's resolutions. And unfortunately, it means, I think, that a lot of people are spending a lot of unnecessary money on fitness products. How does somebody determine what's right for them and what isn't? Well, what happens is that a lot of people uh, go on these uh, infomercials at night and they, the, it appeals to their emotions. So what they usually do, it's an impulse buy, and they'll buy these ab rollers or ab machines on, on a premonition that they're actually going to use it. And what happens when they get these things, um, it just sits in a box or they have good intentions of actually getting into shape, but they don't know how to go about doing that. So whatever is an emotional impulse buy is usually what is, uh, takes place uh, in the New Year's resolution. Well, let's talk about some of the claims that you might hear in those infomercials and even in some of the ads in, in the, the magazines right. that people might read. You can lose 10 pounds or 15 pounds in two weeks or four inches in two weeks. How reasonable is that, assuming you're not a world-class athlete who maybe put on some extra weight? I think it's extremely unreasonable, and I think th they tell you that you can lose that many pounds in, in a certain amount of weeks, but it, in, in truth, it really doesn't happen. Most of the time, the weight that you do lose is water weight. Uh, the fat loss occurs over a period of time. It is recommended that you do not lose more than a pound of body weight a week, and that's even saying it's a lot. So if people are going to lose 10 pounds in that amount of time, it's too short of a period of time, and most of the weight that you do lose is water weight, and you would tend to lose a lot of lean muscle weight. It just doesn't work physio physiologically that way. You mentioned the, the ab roller, the ab cruncher, uh, you know, a lot of those products that are out there. Right. Do they work? If you're if you're really dedicated to them, or are some of those infomercial products just questionable. Well, work, uh, well, well, they do work, but I mean, there's nothing that you can't do with conventional exercise. Uh, what you could do with an ab roller or an ab cruncher, you could do with basic crunches, and just you don't really need to go out and spend the money. And the reason why people do spend this money is because they think there's something hidden in there that may benefit them, but in turn really just actually figuring out how to do the basic exercise ergonomically will work. There are basically two different ways, well three if you count personal training, but we'll get to that that's okay. I know that's what you do. There are two basic ways, assuming you're not going to a personal trainer, that you can try to get your exercise in. One is to do it by yourself, which may be Correct. main either running or bringing some equipment into your house. The other is to get a membership at a gym. Mm -hmm. uh, how does somebody who's, who's just starting out determine which one is best for them? Well, the way they would determine that is what is it that you really like to do? What is going to really motivate you to actually do the exercise? Exercise is exercise, no matter how you flip it. Do you want to go to the gym? Do you want to sit, go into a facility where there may be a lot of people, maybe overcrowding? What type of gym are you going to? Uh, what is the service involved? Uh, if you would like to, you know, if you need that type of atmosphere, training atmosphere that's going to actually motivate you to work out, then you would want to go to a gym. On the other hand, if you're going to spend uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars to set up a, a gym room in your home, you've got to kind of be sure you're going to use that Absolutely. Too. I mean, there are a lot of people who buy these large pieces of equipment and uh, it becomes nothing but a clothes hanger. Uh, so you really want, you want to do, you want to do your soul searching to figure out what you really want to do. Do you want to go to a gym? Do you want that atmosphere? But in turn, it might be overcrowding. It might, there might be a lot of people there or do you want to spend the time to really focus in at home and work on your equipment, but it, it involves some type of knowledge to use the equipment. And there comes the situation where, you know, not doing the uh, exercise properly can lead to hurting yourself. All right, let's talk a little bit about personal trainers, because I know that that's one of the things that, uh, that your service offers. In, in your case, people come to your facility and they would train with you or the other trainers. Mm -hmm. How does somebody decide whether a personal trainer is right for them, and, and what do they look for in a personal training service? Well, here, well, at Custom Training in Union, New Jersey, a lot of people usually find me on my website, in, InBetterShape.com, and what they tell me is, I've tried everything. I just, you know, I went to the gym, I tried working out at home, I'm trying all these diets, I need help. And most of the help usually uh, is, is involved whereby the person is just not sure what they should be doing. Um, they don't feel motivated, they need that push. And they usually come to me 
and they're really honest. They are like, this is the last attempt. I need really a lot of help from you because I just won't do it on my own. So the motivation is a key aspect why a person would seek a personal trainer and also the knowledge base. I've been a trainer for 15 years. I know what really works and what doesn't work through trial and error, and I've seen people make large mistakes. All right, Michael Ranieri, I'm going to ask you to stay with us. We're going to have more with Mike sure. in just a great minute. When we come back, we'll talk about how to find the personal trainer or the gym that's right for you. What exactly should you look for? What questions should you ask? You're watching In Your Corner on News 12 New Jersey, as local as local news gets. We're back on In Your Corner. We're talking this week with Michael Ranieri from Custom Training in Union. He's a personal trainer. He's giving us an inside look at the good and not so good ways to spend your money when it comes to trying to get into better shape. Michael, we were talking about a personal trainer before the break. Assuming that you're ready to make that move, maybe you just don't have the motivation to, uh, to get into better shape on your own, how do you pick the right personal trainer and how much should you expect to pay on a weekly basis? Well, in the state of New Jersey, obviously the rates are different than, let's say, in the state, in the state of Texas, okay? Well, Depending everything's more expensive out here. Exactly. Um, what goes into choosing a personal trainer? Number one, you have to see what their qualifications are. Um, there are 250 uh, certifying bodies in the United States that certified personal trainers. You can send in a $5 check and be a certified trainer. Or you can go to a nationally reputable organization such as the National Strength and Conditioning Association or the American College of Sports Medicine and take a grueling course to uh, be able to test out what your, uh, your knowledge base is in order to be uh, a certified personal trainer nationally, nationally accredited. So you want to look for the qualification. You want to find individual. the right credentials. Then. You also want to know what the experience is of the indiv individual. You want to have some references as to clients who have trained with the trainer and what were their results. And I'm sure the prices are pretty much all over the map. If you go to one of those they guys are. who's the trainer to the stars, he may charge you an exorbitant amount exactly. you know, per, per hour. Right. What's the base rate and what's about the average I rate? would say you're, you're averaging anywhere between 50 to approximately 70 to $85 per hour, depending on the trainer, the qualification of the trainer, the area, and uh, what type of program do you actually commit to? Is it a six-month program, a one-year program? So it's not something you want to do lightly. I mean, if you're, uh, if you're talking about $60 an hour to pick somewhere in between, then and you're doing it three hours a week, that's $180 a week. It's a fairly sizable investment. It's a sizable investment, and at the same time, you want to do your homework and actually do some investigation on a trainer and actually see what that trainer is all about. Are you able to get along with that trainer? Well, obviously, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's one-on-one -on -one personal training. It's personal. So are you going to be motivated by this person? Why are you paying them? Is it something that really pushes you by being with this person? Let's talk about, about it if, you, if, if you're doing it even a, a less uh, grandiose method. You're not going to start off with a personal trainer right away, you, but you're considering a gym membership, which I'm sure a lot of people are or have already right. this time of year. Right. Um, what do you look for in that facility? What should it offer for the, for the dollars? I mean, again, gyms are all over the place. You get them for $40 a month or $100 a month. Okay, well, we, you were mentioning something in our conversation at our break. You said the gym, some gyms are overcrowded. Well, you want to see, are you going to be able to use the equipment readily? Or you have to stand around for an hour? No, obviously, what are the prices? Uh, the, the gym uh, starts out by asking you for an enrollment fee, and then there is a monthly fee. The monthly fee is the backbone of the gym. That's how they make their money in rolling dues. So all encapsulated, what are you really paying at the end? Okay, what is your commitment? Can you try it out for three months? If you don't like it, can you get out? Or you have to go through this trial and tribulation to get out of the contract. So what hap gyms try to do is lock you in to a year's membership. You may not want a year's membership. So you, you may, may want to try it out. You may want to go month to month for a little while. Absolutely, and to, to see if you really like the gym or you want to move on. And I guess obviously also the type of equipment that they have. I absolutely, mean, if, 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 the type you know, of... It's, it's not, I unless you're a bodybuilder, you want more than weights. Well, you what are you... What are you it's, it's not always about the weights. It's about the, um, the, the service that is offered to you from the gym, the quality of the gym, how far the gym is from you. If you have to drive an hour right. away, well, then, then you're going to be so go. tired by the time you get there that you don't even want to work out. Right, if you want to make that type of traveling commitment. Michael Ranieri from Custom Training in Union, thank you so much. That does it for this week. If you'd like more information about anything you've seen on our show, including how you can get in touch with Michael, log on to our website at news12.com and we will hook you up.